But first, back to this week, where there's been quite a bit in the news about cell phone services, including the launch of a digital system called GSM. Eventually, it'll let you phone from anywhere in Europe using new digital phones. What all the phone operators want, of course, is to make cell phones a general consumer item rather than an exclusive gadget. Well, there's one here that might tempt the fashion victims. It's not digital, but it is the smallest cell phone ever, and it's due to be launched next week. And if you're wondering where the mouthpiece is on something this small, you can either flick out like that, and there's a microphone there, or there's an earpiece. And that has got a tiny microphone on it as well. Well, if all this brings a boom in cell phone use, it could also bring a boom in misuse. On the streets of New York, telephone technology has become the latest battleground between the police and some very serious criminals. We're at 83rd and we're headed towards 78th Street. You can see right here, we've got three or four cellular phone calls right in this area as we're coming up on this intersection. In this neighborhood, you have times where 100% of the cellular telephone calls that are going through the switch are all illegal and cannot be billed for because of the number of cloned phones in this area. New York City is suffering from a new electronic crime wave known as phone cloning. And this is a phone that's been cloned. It used to be just the same as any other of the thousands of phones over there in Manhattan. Then it was stolen, reprogrammed and given a new identity. Now, when a phone's stolen, it doesn't take long for it to be reported missing. Then it's blocked by the phone company, making it useless. But that doesn't deter the sophisticated villain who goes one step further. Having stolen one phone, he needs a second victim, and there are plenty to choose from. This time, it's not the phone itself he's after, but rather its identity. The cloner intercepts a call and steals the telephone number and the phone's secret serial number as well. Then to unblock the stolen phone, he reprograms it with a new stolen identity. It's been cloned. Most of these cloned phones end up across the East River in Queens, where they're sold and used at the expense of the person whose number's been stolen. And that person has no idea they've been cloned. Don Delaney is head of New York's electronic crime squad, and it's his job to catch the phone cloners. Okay. Although the phone companies are losing millions of dollars in illegal cloned calls, Don Delaney's biggest concern is that some criminals are using cloned phones to avoid police phone tapping. Well, it was that uh, investigating traditional organized crime, we were able to follow them and utilize uh, legal wiretaps in the United States. But when phone cloning uh, came about, it made it near impossible. They would become the telephone number of the person to whom the phone was cloned. So where are we heading now? We're heading over to Jackson Heights, which is a major area for the redistribution of cocaine in the United States. And it's the number one area for illicit uh, phone fraud, uh, especially cloned phones. This evening, Don's on the lookout for the drug dealers who are using cloned phones. To track them down, he's using the same sort of technology that the phone cloners use themselves to steal phone identities. You can see the spikes when I search the channels of the number of cellular calls that are ongoing in this neighborhood right now, in this intersection especially. The number of people on these corners uh, are factions within the uh, Colombian community here uh, that generally tend to be from the Medellin cartel and the Cali cartel. And this is one of the reasons you see the number of cellular phone calls on the screen here now. And through this whole neighborhood, four block area. That bodega we just passed on the corner, uh, they took five Mac-10 fully automatic machine guns out of there this past year. Am I gonna hit him? I'd really not like to hit somebody in this neighborhood with a vehicle. Uh, on the screen now, you can see there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven calls, and the amplitude will increase as we go down the block, indicating that there's a uh, call cell operating uh, within this block, and there's cloned phones in that location. That location is the storefront that you see to the immediate left. Don suspects that this shop houses up to a dozen cloned phones, available to any drug trafficker who wants to phone home to Colombia at minimum cost and with maximum privacy. So what we'll be doing is coming back here with uh, other investigators to follow up on this. I think what we have to do right now is get out of the neighborhood. Okay, thanks. 
The New York police are having some success in finding the phone cloners. But there is actually something that would put an end to phone cloning overnight. And this is it. It's called a clipper chip. And it's the ultimate in scrambling technology, which means it can encode all communications and make them absolutely secure. No more phone cloning. And for that matter, no more eavesdropping either. But strangely enough, here in the land of liberty, there are those who think that eavesdropping is necessary. The FBI claim that phone tapping is crucial to their activities, and therefore secure phones would be a threat to national security. However, if the FBI delays the arrival of the Clipper chip, they'll be doing a favour for the phone cloners of Jackson Heights. They'll be at liberty to continue cloning to their heart's content. And evidently that's already starting to happen here.